OK, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're just after 1 p.m. So in the interest of, of, of time and everyone's lunch breaks, uh, we'll get started. So we're delighted to, to welcome you all here today to the final session of our Cubs postgraduate webinar series. And today uh, we will be talking to you about the uh, postgraduate taught offerings in human resource management studies here at the Cork University Business School. So my name is uh, Dr. James Duggan, and I'm the Program Director for the Higher Diploma in Human Resource Management, and I'm joined on the call today by Dr. Alton Sherman, who is the Program Director for the MSc in Resource Management, as well as some of our current students, as well as some former students of both of these programs. And we're really excited to give you a very brief overview, almost like a snapshot of these programs and what it's like to be a student, the student experience, and what you can expect uh, if, under, if undertaking uh, either of these programs. So just a reminder at this stage that the Q&A box should be visible to you on your version of Teams. So throughout the webinar, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do feel free to pop them into the chat and we'll get to those at the end of each uh, of the program discussions. And also uh, just to let you know that this pro uh, this uh, webinar rather is being uh, recorded. OK, so just before we move into discussing the higher diploma in HRM program, we wanted to tell you very briefly a little bit about us here at the Cork University Business School. So Cubs is Ireland's largest business school with an excess of 4000 students, and it's also a double accredited business school of which there are fewer than 200 worldwide. So it's a very exciting uh, time and phase of, of growth and activity and development here at the business school. And in addition to that, our HR programs, both of which we're speaking to you about on today's webinar, are both accredited by the Chartered Institute of, of Personnel and Development. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the CIPD. So the CIPD is the leading professional body for HR professionals uh, globally with over 160,000 members uh, internationally. So our association with the CIPD for these programs helps to make sure that our HR offerings are current, topical, timely, and that they're equipping our students in the best possible way uh, for their career or future career in the HR profession. So I want to begin then everyone today by just very briefly speaking to you about the Higher Diploma in Human Resource Management program. So as I mentioned, I'm the program director for this particular program. And to give you a very brief overview of what the program is all about, it is a structured educational program which is very heavily targeted at early career HR professionals, but also maybe those people who were seeking to enter the HR profession who don't already work in that space or have experience in that space, but are looking to move into HR uh, in their careers. So because it is quite an introductory type of program in that sense, the overall focus of the program is to provide a very comprehensive overview of the main roles and duties of HR professionals in contemporary organizations. And as mentioned in the previous slide, the program is accredited by the CIPD. So the HDIP and HRM is a one year part time program. So it runs from September right the way through to the following August, and we'll have more details on that and programming and scheduling in a moment. And the awards upon successful completion of the program is an NFQ level eight qualification, along with associate membership of the CIPD also. So in terms then of the aims of this program or why you might be uh, interested in enrolling on this particular program really aligns to who it's targeted towards in our previous slide there. So if you are at an earlier career stage in HR at the very least, or if you're looking to enter HR for the first time, then the benefit of this program is it really provides you with an in-depth understanding of the core functions of HRM in contemporary organizations as well as this. Uh, we try to cover as much as we can around the latest developments and key issues and trends in the people management space also both internationally and domestically here in Ireland and as you're probably aware uh, the workforce is, is in a constant state of flux never more so than the moment so um, new technologies AI all of those trends impacting on people management as a practice and a discipline um, so we try to keep in touch and engage with all of those areas and likewise the program helps students to build the knowledge skills and behaviors that are required by HR professionals who are seeking to be responsible ethical and also effective in how they go about their professions. So as you'll probably gather from those particular points, the this program, the HTIP and HRM is quite heavily practice oriented, quite practitioner focused and quite applied. And to help us to achieve that, we also engage 
with uh, a number of industry guest speakers on this program who work with us to deliver uh, guest lectures or perhaps even workshops across several different modules. But of course, this is also an academic program, so we do also provide you with the core academic concepts and frameworks that are required uh, to address HR challenges. And last but not least, uh, undertaking this program, you will graduate then with the CIPD accredited qualification as well as associate membership of the CIPD. So very, very briefly then everyone, just to give you a quick overview of what you can expect in terms of modules and topics on this program. So students take modules to the value of 60 credits over the course of the year on this program, and you can see some of the modules listed on the screen there that you would undertake on this particular program. So you can see that they really take you through the core functions of what HR is all about and go beyond that then even further to push the boundaries of our understanding of HRM. So managing the HR function through to recruitment and selection, performance and rewards, learning and developments, employment relations and professional and ethical HR and practice. So if you uh, are wondering about the other modules or want more details on any of these particular modules that are offered on the program, uh, you can find more details on the program page on the club's website, or of course you can get in touch uh, with us directly and we'd be happy to talk through some details. In terms of assessments on the program, very briefly here, uh, the program has a hybrid approach to assessment. So all modules are assessed continuously throughout the year and students work individually as well as in groups. So the real focus here, I guess, is more so on continuous assessments and less so on uh, the, I guess, formalized terminal end of semester exams that we might have been used to at, at undergraduate level or whatever it might have been. The focus here very much is on continuous assessment. So in terms of delivery and scheduling for the program then, and this particular point is, is, is quite important and it's usually one of the most commonly asked questions that we have for the program. So this is a part-time program, but when we say it runs for a year, we mean that it runs for literally a full 12 months from September right the way through to the following August. So compared to the traditional academic year, which runs from September to around now, um, April, May time, you will also be engaging in modules and learning activities throughout the summer months as part of the HDIP and HRN program. So most students on the program work full time while completing their studies. Uh, and because of that, because they're also completing 60 credits over the course of a year and getting a level A qualification, uh, it is at times at the very least can be quite an intensive program and there's quite a lot of uh, work and commitment required from students but in general because it's so practical uh, students find the program very rewarding and we'll hear in a little while from some of our current and past students who I, I'm sure will probably echo that type of sentiment. So what's really important then to note is that just uh, because I guess you will have some sort of online learning experience and some online learning activities as part of the HTIP and HRM program, we really want to emphasize at this stage that on campus attendance is very, very essential as part of this program. So the schedule for the program you can see here on the screen uh, runs on Mondays and Wednesdays from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. So after the regular working day uh, and on Mondays and Wednesdays throughout the year, you are uh, required and expected to be here on the UCC campus to attend your classes, your lectures and your workshops. And as well as that, there are also a very small number of Saturday workshops throughout the year, normally running from early morning until early to mid afternoon uh, and normally delivered by some of our industry partners. So in terms of entry requirements then for this program, again, another uh, commonly asked question that we have around this program. So the HDIP and HRM uh, qualification that you receive upon graduation is a level eight NFQ qualification. So because of that, we ask that applicants for the program uh, already possess an NFQ level seven, qualification. Now, this can be in any discipline. You're not required to have a background in HR, in management, in commerce, in business, nothing like that. It can be in any area. And as well as that, we also ask that applicants have at least two years of professional work experience. But again, this can be in any area whatsoever. It doesn't have to be business or HR related, and it can also be a combination of several different types of work experience that make up the two years. OK, so as well as this more traditional entry route, we also have an alternative entry route through the recognition of prior learning. So basically what this means is that if you do not already have a level seven qualification, we can also consider applicants who have an NFQ level six qualification again in any discipline whatsoever. But we do then ask that those applicants have a significant level of professional experience, ideally in HRM or some sort of a similarly related area such as employment relations, coaching, training and development, even some supervision experience uh, can be really beneficial there. Uh, 
So just for clarity, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the NFQ terminology that we're using here, we're referring to the National Framework of Qualifications. You can see the half moon graphic here on the right hand side of your screen. And uh, what we're concerned with for the HDIP is level eight. So we're looking for then anyone that has level seven or level six qualifications already. OK, now, on the other hand, we also just want to emphasize that we really are keen, I guess, to make this program as accessible as possible uh, for as many people are interested and passionate in HR and becoming an HR professional. So if you are unsure of your eligibility to apply for this program based on the information here, please do feel free to get in touch with us. You can email me directly. Uh, my contact details will be on the screen in a moment and uh, I'd be happy to chat through your experience, uh, any educational qualifications you have and see what we can make work there. OK, so just some final information then uh, for me, everyone. So some practical information around the next cycle of the program. Uh, the start date for the next cohort of the HDIP and HRM is the 11th of September 2023. That's a Monday and you can see the fees on the screen for the program there normally can be paid in two installments. And this fee also includes your CIPD associate membership fee too, which is built into that. OK, so applications for the program are reviewed and offers are issued on a rolling ongoing basis. So, for example, we already have several applicants who have accepted offers for the next cycle of the program for next September for next September or other. So because spaces are limited, we do then recommend uh, applying as early as possible to avoid disappointments. And this particular program has had waiting lists in operation uh, in previous years. So finally, then for me, in terms of progression and pathways. So because this is a level eight qualification upon successful completion, then students can, of course, proceed to uh, or choose to progress uh, to study at master's level and the MSc and HRM being uh, one of the obvious choices here, which my colleague Olton will speak to in a moment. And professionally, graduates of the program have gone on to work in HR roles, both nationally, internationally, uh, across a really interesting and dynamic range of organizations, both domestically and multinationally, as well as in the public sector here in Ireland. So finally, then for the HDIP and HRM, you'll see an image here on the screen just last week, uh, our previous cohort of HDIP and HRM students uh, graduated here on the UCC campus. And it was really great that day to meet so many of them and to hear about their experience on the program and what they've done since then with the qualifications. So we thought it would be useful to ask one of our current students as well as one of our past students uh, to come along to today's webinar to share their experiences of their time on the program with you. So firstly, uh, I'll call on Orla, who is uh, currently undertaking the program this year and living and breathing the HDIP and HRM as we speak at the moment. Uh, Orla, thank you so much for, for joining us. And I'm sure all of us here on the call uh, would be really interested to hear about how the program is going for you and maybe why you chose the HDIP and HRM in particular. Perfect. Can you hear me OK, James, there? I'm just on my phone. You can. That's all right. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Thanks very Thanks. much. Thank you. So hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. As James said, my name is Orla O'Brien and I'm currently participating in the Higher Diploma and Human Resources in UCC. So in terms, I suppose, of the motivations for choosing the programme, I think it kind of began when I majored in my management um, course back in UCC in 2017 as part of my commerce degree. and. Since then, I really always wanted a career in HR. Um, since graduating then, I was asked to come back and work on a finance project in the company where I did my placement in third year. So I've been kind of pigeonholed into finance ever since. And I felt I lost myself in terms of what I wanted to do. And when I saw the course on the UCC postgraduate site, it really stood out to me. It essentially ticked all the boxes and I always wanted to get into, into HR. So wasn't really sure in which type of function it would suit me best. So the course looked like it covered all aspects of HR. So it was always looking like a good starting point to kind of get me back on track to my future career in HR. So at the moment I'm in finance at Eli Lilly in Little Island. So kind of progressing hopefully to get into HR maybe towards the end of this year once hopefully I pass all my assignments and graduate next year. Um, so that's kind of my plan in place at the moment. Um, in terms of the experience so far, I must say I'm really, really enjoying the course. Uh, we do have a smaller class this year but I think that helped a bit because we're really close knit group and we all get along really, really well. Definitely coming into the course, I was a bit anxious. I would maybe be falling behind or out of the loop because I had zero HR experience. But as time went on, each module has proved so far that you really don't need a H HR career to do the course and you can still really, you know, get a full understanding of it and really enjoy it as well. Um, it has definitely inspired me in terms of my future career and it's definitely a great guide to the different sub functions within HR and what's out there to learn. 
And I know going back to college is always daunting, but having the class we have now and the bit of fun that we have, you know, we do have great fun and we have our WhatsApp group, which is always definitely a bit busier around the time of the assignments and we have a bit of crack. So, you know, that's a great um, rock to have and, you know, we get on really well. Even our presentations there going back to September, I suppose, you know, they were a bit rocky to start off with. We didn't really know each other that well. We were just trying to get into the swing of the academic side of things. But as time went on and as close as we got, you know, the presentations now almost seemed like a bit of fun. We had James's assignment there back in, um, I think it was back in February, the presentations. And it was really like life, you know, we came along so much since September and we've really like developed our presentation skills, our communication, public speaking, all that. So, you know, in terms of having the bit of crack with the presentations, you, you do get to learn a lot along the way. So it's great for that too. Um, so far, I suppose, in terms of modules and assignments, sorry now, James, I'm, I'm not going to say employment relations. <laughs> um, I must say, when I started off, I kind of always said I wanted to get into the recruitment and selection, but I think as the course has gone on, I felt I found my niche in the learning development side of things. Um, the module really stuck out to me as it kind of had that psychological element to it and how people learn and think. And the content itself was really interesting. And it probably was one of my favourite assignments, if you could call assignments one of your favourites. Um, it really opened my eyes to the learning development side of HR. Um, we had to conduct an interview with our learning development rep at work. So speaking to her kind of made me really excited about a future there, which essentially is why I did the course and what it's about. It kind of helps you find the missing piece of your career. But obviously I did love the employment relations module as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it from my side. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. That's great, Orla. Thank you so much, uh, especially for the, the plug for my module there, which is great. Um, <laughs> no so problem. Thank you, Orla. And I, I know it's a, it's a very busy time on the program at the moment, actually. So thank you so much for for taking the time to to join us today to come along. No um, so I, I I hope uh, those of you on the call listening found that useful. And also, we we've invited one of our former graduates of the program, uh, Nicola, to join us on today's webinar. Also, uh, so Nicola can fill us in on the exact year that you graduated, a couple of years back on the program. Uh, Nicola, we'd love to hear about your time on the program and also maybe how it's uh, benefited you since since graduation and your career as well. Thanks, James. Uh, thanks for asking me. Um, I suppose I'm, I was part of the 2021 class um, and so we did our learning all through COVID. So our experience was a bit different because we were online, um, but no less rewarding. Um, I suppose just to I suppose kick off a bit, my own background is I've been working in a not-for-profit organisation for the last 26 years and um, wearing various different hats but kind of gradually veered towards the HR side of stuff. As HR evolved over the years and it's become more demanding and expectations were rising, I suppose I realised I needed to I suppose cement a qualification in it firstly, but also give a bit of credibility to the knowledge I had, gain more knowledge, skills, experience, etc., and do a deep dive into the why of what we do, why why we do what we do. So enter the HDIP. The I suppose the reason I chose this particular course at the time was the delivery method. I was working full time. Um, it was two nights a week, the occasional class on a Saturday, and the icing on the cake, no exams. Um, so it, it was great, it, you know, it, it just really hit, you know, hit all the marks there. It was so doable. Um, now at the time, you know, I mean, I, James listened to me on a call one day where I was completely stressing out, but it was the most fabulous experience um, and the, the the knowledge it was gained was incredible. So like if anyone's concerned about the time it takes, the year flies, it's gone in a blink of an eye and what you get out of it, you have it for a lifetime. Um, I suppose, the, as I said there, the lecturers are extremely supportive, ha were, you know, they were always at the other end, you know, if there's any bit of further explanation, support, guidance, and maybe not even in their particular module that they were delivering, you know, if it, you, there was there was just so, so available, all of them that we came across. Um, a great support was the fellow learners. We had a very mixed group. There were people like me who 
we're kind of, you know, very daunted about the world of academia um, and we're, you know, kind of maybe in the middle of their work life cycle. There were those who were fresh out of college and looking for, you know, to further develop a career they're in. And there were those who never experienced HR and just wanted to try it out. It was so rich. Uh, the, everybody brought something, the WhatsApp group, the conversations, the shared learning, the experiences and the support even a few years later that WhatsApp group is still working and people are still in contact with each other. So it is fabulous. Um, and I suppose the modules that we did, they were so relevant and so topical. Um, you know, like the world of work changes and it's very hard to, you know, stay on top of teaching a subject or learning a subject when, you know, in six months time it could be changed. The, the relevance, it could be changed or even the, you know, the, the trend could change. And um, so it is so, so topical. Um, and, you know, the, while the course focuses on areas of generic practice, they're all coming from a foundation, you know, they're all providing a foundation and a theory perspective that when you're going back into your day to day work, that you can apply that very, very easily and you have a deeper understanding of why you should take that approach in that conversation with that person or why you should implement this strategy or this policy, um, you know, to get a better outcome in the workplace. It really is a, an excellent way of creating the link of, you know, this is here is the why we do what we do. Um, do you know, and like some of the items covered in those modules, psychological safety, you often see it banded about, you know, two words, but what did it actually mean and how important it is in, um, in a workplace and from a HR perspective, whether you're a HR administrator, a HR generalist, a business partner, whatever, it is important to have an understanding of that. Organisational commitment, uh, another one. Um, one of the ones I found particularly useful with them was kind of purpose and strategy. Um, you, you're, you're drifting along and you, again, there are words and you're kind of, yeah, you understand what purpose and strategy is about, but you don't actually realise the importance of what purpose, understanding the purpose and this, linking it to your strategy as a, a business in the workplace. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a shop or whether you're in a restaurant, hotel, charity, big global company, it's the same. It means the same for, it has the same level of importance really. Um, do you know, because it means that you're going to get it right at the end of it. Um, so that was that was critical, you know, a really good module to have. Other things like the living wage, well-being, uh, diversity, all of those elements of those modules, they're so topical, so relevant and so important. I, you know, and I suppose bringing it on into my career and how it's benefited, like there has not been one thing in that module that I have not used since. Um, I have gone back to my notes and different things. I have used the experience that I've gained even from the other learners, the lecturers. It has just, I suppose, my, my current role as a HR manager in an organisation is, is so broad, but everything is so relevant. Um, the, all that learning has been used. Um, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't pick out any one thing. Uh, that in particular, but I suppose if I'm really talking about the benefit of my career, I'm one of the few who stayed with the same employer out of our class group. Nearly everyone uh, progressed, you know, had a career progression into a more advanced HR role. I actually stayed where I was. And um, what the benefit was is towards the end of the course, we had a significant change in our management structure here in the organization. And at that time, I myself and the colleague had to step up and support the board in that management change, that change management process. And that was for me where the important the importance of purpose and strategy, psychological safety, they all came in there because we destabilized as an organization at the time. Um, I we had a volunteer board, they wanted to go straight out and hire a CEO. And you're kind of saying, actually, no, you have to wait and you have to. What kind of person do you want? Where are we going as an organisation? 
And it was only the course that was able to give me the confidence to be able to say that and do that and implement that. And, you know, it's just been going on since then in the couple of years since then. So I suppose for me, the biggest benefit out of the course is the confidence to do what I'm doing. And um, I've also built, you know, um, strong networks. I'm a member of the CIPD Southern Region Committee. Um, so we've been involved in organising uh, events, HR events there through that. And without the course, I would never have gone on a committee like that previously or any other the HR forums I'm in. So if anyone's considering doing it, I could not recommend it highly enough. And I want to give a particular thanks to James because there was one of those modules and he did really support me through it. So thank you, James. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you so much. And I, I know, Nic Nicola, you're, you're joining us in your lunch break today, so we really appreciate okay. you taking the, the time out yeah. to, to come along. Um, so everyone on the call, I, I hope you found that beneficial to hear from, from Nicola and Oral about their experiences on the programme. And just before uh, we leave you now for the HDIP and HRM, uh, we just wanted to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you might have either for myself or indeed for, for Oral and, uh, or Nicola who have who've kindly stayed on the call. And likewise, uh, my contact details are on the screen there. So if you have any questions at all about this programme, uh, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you and we hopefully look forward to uh, receiving some of your applications over the next couple of uh, weeks or months. So I'm just keeping an eye on, on, on the question chat there, but you know, in, in the interest of time, maybe I, I can pass over to Alton to discuss the uh, MSC and HRM, and then we can return to Q&A at the end if anybody has any questions. So thank you so much again, and uh, Alton, I'll pass over to you. Thanks very much, James. Um, thanks very much, everybody, for showing an interest in the HR offerings in Cubs. Um, I won't take up too much of your time. I know some of you are going back to work shortly. Uh, you're listening in on your lunch breaks and things like that. Um, so my name is Alton Sherman. I am the program director for the MSC uh, in Human Resource Management. Um, so I have a couple of slides to share. I'll just go through them now. Um, and again, like James, if there are any questions, um, at the end, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. I'm just double checking. James, can I ask, can you see my slides? Uh, yeah, I can see them all. You're just uh, yeah. not in presenter mode, but yeah. That's okay. That's fine. Right. So, um, the, so the MSC in Human Resource Management uh, has been around uh, since 2016, but back in 2020, we actually made some changes to the programme. I suppose, firstly, to make sure the program uh, better reflected the reality of the HR profession. So we included new modules and change assessments and things like that. Um, but also we wanted to, I suppose, more adequately prepare our students for life uh, in the HR profession. So we've much more of a focus now on practical skills uh, and practical training that we think would be useful for someone uh, looking to develop their HR career. Um, so in, term, in terms of the program, um, and James mentioned this in his presentation as well, uh, the program is uh, accredited by the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, which is the CIPD, and this is the accrediting body for um, any HR program in Ireland, the UK and uh, the Middle East. Uh, the program itself is designed, I think, to, I suppose, reflect the realities of the contemporary HR profession, but it also seeks to develop those on the program in terms of developing their HR career. Um, the duration of the program is one year full time, um, so students will start uh, their first module in the beginning of September and they work right up until the middle of August then in terms of submitting their applied research project. Now, students also have the option of completing the program across two years uh, in a, on a part time basis. Uh, and again, they, they will work, they will be in with the full time students in year one. And again, they'll be in with the new cohort of full time students then uh, in year two. So a couple of reasons why I think you should do um, the, the program. First of all, just to highlight, we have excellent employability record of our graduates. Our most recent survey of graduates on the program found that 95% uh, of those were in uh, full time employment in a HR or HR related role. Uh, so something we're very, very proud of. 
it now is a good time to be entering HR in terms of looking for work. There are lots of HR jobs out there at the moment and have been for the last number of years. And I think the forecast for the foreseeable future, again, is very strong employment opportunities in the HR domain. The programme, I think, captures some of the core aspects that James would have mentioned in, for the HDIP in terms of recruitment and selection, uh, talent management, performance management, the core areas of HR, but also we focus on uh, some of the more emerging areas of HR as well, like healthy organisations, data analytics, uh, and the whole idea of talent development. So I think we we capture the, the core areas of, of HR, but also, as I said, some of the more emerging and developing areas that have uh, was come on the horizon in the last five years or so. Uh, our teaching team is made up of world class researchers, uh, and I don't say that term lightly. The research team or the, the lecturers on the program uh, have uh, internationally recognized research uh, and have published their research in world elite journals. But we also have uh, a number of practitioners teaching on the program. Again, these practitioners have a wealth of HR experience with some of Ireland's um, biggest organizations. We also uh, include a wide range of guest lecturers and speakers uh, who share their HR experience. And again, they would be um, practitioners from both Irish and international organizations. And almost every practitioner and every guest speaker we would have would be in a senior role in these organizations. I would also draw your attention to the applied research project component of um, the program. This is a recent addition. So instead of doing a traditional thesis that you would typically associate with a, a master's program, this apl applied research project has much more of a practical focus. So students partner with an organization to work with them on a particular HR project of significance or strategic relevance for that particular organization. So the student works with that industry partner uh, collaboratively and then they submit their report to the organization and they submit their applied research project uh, at the end uh, to us. And I'll speak more about the applied research project in a second in terms of preparing students for entering uh, the workforce. In terms of the timetable, it's condensed. Uh, so we did an industry survey with uh, HR practitioners and students in terms of what would be the preferable timetable to have both full time and part time students in together. And we decided that to have students in between one o'clock and 7.30 twice a week. Uh, so it is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you'll be in Tuesdays and Thursdays um, if you are a full time student. And then if you are a part time student, you are in on Tuesdays in year one and then you are in on Thursdays in year two. So it's a condensed timetable, but just to highlight as well that as a master's program, as a level nine program, there is considerable expectation on you in terms of reading, group assignments, working with your colleagues and your students on particular group projects. So it is a challenging program because it is a level nine program. Um, but as I said, the actual in-class hours, we have it condensed into just twice a week between one and 7.30. Um, Again, just to re-emphasize as well, this is really, really important for those looking for a HR career or those looking to expand or develop their HR career. Our program is accredited by the CIPD, the, the accrediting body for HR in Ireland and the UK. It's very difficult, and James would agree with this, it's very difficult in Ireland and in the UK and in the Middle East to gain a HR job without a HR accredited CIPD qualification. Um, in almost every job you will see, we are looking for applicants to have a CIPD accredited qualification and obviously the HDIP does, but our master's program does as well. And it's something we've worked very hard to get and retain and we have this uh, accreditation for, um, for the years ahead. Um, in terms of the program content, um, you can say we try to evenly split the content across semester one and semester two and semester three. Um, you'll be able to see kind of a, a kind of insight into some of the topics and modules that we have, as I said, reflecting the core areas of HR, like recruitment and selection and performance management, but also some of the emerging areas and really key areas of HR now that I suppose have come, come to the fore in the last couple of years, like healthy workplaces and um, data analytics. Um, and I suppose the business case for analytics there, you can see that specific module. Uh, and then in semester three, which is the summer semester, students work, uh, once they've all the modules completed, they work then uh, exclusively on the applied research project with the participating organization. And in terms of the applied research project, so students partner with an organization to work on a specific HR project of strategic relevance to that firm. 
So st there's a number of options available to them. So students can work with their own organizations. So if you work with a particular organization and you're doing completing the program, you can do the applied research project with your own organization. Or uh, we have a very strong network here on the on the HR program because we're very much connected to the HR Research Centre here in the university. Um, so we have a wide range of participating organisations on the project. This is just a sample of some of the companies we've worked with uh, and, are and continue to work with in terms of the applied research project, UN, Heineken Ireland, uh, Novartis, Stryker, and also lots of organisations uh, in public sector and non-profit in terms of, let's say, the National Council for the Blind of Ireland or the Irish Blood Transfusion Service. Um, why I would say this is a, a USP or a unique selling point of the programme is that we know from speaking to graduates of the programme is that when they are applying for jobs, we do know that uh, employers are asking lots of questions about the applied research project. So tell me about the applied research project. What did you do specifically? What knowledge did you gain? What skills did you develop? And how can you apply those to this particular job? Uh, so lots of uh, the students that we speak with in the last couple of years who have completed the applied research project are telling us during the interview process and as part of the application process for work, for new jobs, they are being asked specifically questions about the applied research project. So we think it's good preparation for setting up students um, for um, employment in uh, the HR domain. And in some instances as well, uh, students working on these particular projects have actually been retained by the participating organisation. So we had one student last year who was working in the area of healthy workplaces and they felt that the project was went very well. The student was working very well on the project, made a real big contribution to the organisation. So they actually turned that project into a role and that student is still working with that particular organisation. So again, a very good example of the, the, the success and the benefit of the applied research project. Uh, in terms of the career paths of recent graduates, as I said, we're very proud of our strong employment employability record. These are just some a sample of some of the organisations that company are, that our, our graduates have got on to work with. Lily, Reiner, Stryker, Deloitte, VMware, IBEC. Uh, again, you can see some of these are very like international and domestic organizations and they're working in key HR areas in these organizations. You'll actually hear from one of our graduates in a second. Um, in terms of the entry requirements for the HR Masters, uh, we expect a minimum second class honors grade one uh, in a primary honors degree, which is a level eight program. So effectively, you need to have a two H1 on a level eight program to gain entry to this level nine program. Now, in some instances, a student may not have a two one on a level eight program, but may have other qualifications and other professional qualifications, as well as significant work experience that we would accept them on the program. But when these students are applying for the program, they have to, I suppose, sell themselves in terms of their HR work experience. So as an example, you might have a 2-2 on a level eight work, uh, I'm sorry, on a level eight program, but you might have five years significant HR related work experience. Um, and again, so together with the work experience and the 2-2 qualification, that student then would meet the entry requirements. But we would take these students then and we would assess each application on a case by case basis. But the fastest way to be offered a place on the programme is to have uh, a minimum 2H1 on a level eight programme. So again, some of you may have questions um, uh, about the programme and you may put them in the chat function and I, I can, I'll happily answer them uh, if needs be. But I think it might be helpful, first of all, uh, if we just hear from Chloe Davis, who was the class rep from last year's cohort, who actually graduated last Monday. Uh, and again, Chloe might just speak to her experience on the programme, why she took, did the programme in the first instance and how it prepared her for her, her new role uh, in Deloitte. So I'll hand it over to you for a few minutes there, Chloe. Thanks, Emil. Thanks, Alton. I'm perfect. So hi, everyone. As Alton mentioned, I graduated last week. It's great to see everyone on campus, everyone smiling and happy out. Um, I suppose for my, my current role, I'm doing learning and development within Deloitte. So I actually joined in June. I joined during um, my ARP, which I don't know was a good or bad decision, but we got through it. 
Um, so I suppose just to begin of why I did the programme. Now, just to start off, I didn't have any HR experience whatsoever going into the Masters. So I was definitely nervous going in. So if you want to apply, but you're feeling nervous that you don't have experience, you definitely don't need it um, because the programme covers all areas. So my background is actually in social science. So I completed Bachelor in Social Science in UCC. Um, then I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, I suppose, but I'd always kind of I suppose felt a sense of reward in I suppose impacting on people and helping people but I didn't really know where I fit in the social science world so I took a year out and then realised I had a great interest in the business world so kind of integrated the two together and came up with human resources. Choosing the college for me was easy because um, I loved UCC in my undergrad so I had a bit of unfinished business when our kind of final year got cut short due to Covid so it was great to be able to go back again. Um, choosing the masters in UCC, it, like it was accredited, accredited with CIPD, which is something I was looking out for. It was one year full time, which suited me perfectly. And the modules I thought just were really interesting. And especially as Alton mentioned with the ARP, the fact that you partner with an industry was fantastic. And I'll speak about what I did as well in a second. My experience on the course, um, I think I had a really good experience on the course. Alton might say different, no, I'm sure he won't. <laughs> um, but so yeah, it's really good. Like the lecturers were really informative, engaging. I think we were always so impressed of their kind of success and backgrounds while being also so like friendly and inviting to us. Like no question was ever a silly question. I always felt comfortable asking any question I had or if we, do, we didn't understand anything. You'd either say during class, stay back at class or drop an email. They're always there. And I think that kind of echoed across with the other students that spoke there. There's always um, support there. Within our class, we had a really good support network. We were not a, not a small class, but I I suppose coming from social science or if you come from commerce like you come from really large classes and um, we had I think about 45 in our so it was a nice group so we all kind of I suppose helped each other out we were supporting each other helping each other out where we could which was really good we had a lot of group projects as well which looking back was really really good it kind of I suppose caused us not to stick to our little groups in our course that we would have started with um, and get to know everyone on the course and um, because everyone I suppose takes in stuff differently so everyone can offer a different perspective which was really good. Um, I suppose in terms of being class rep kind of offered me a different lens um, to the masters where it's constantly feeding back feedback from the students um, to mostly to Alton I suppose and Anthony McDonald as well. Um, this definitely helped me in my role with Deloitte because I, I suppose I I suppose developed communication, kind of collaboration and feedback skills. Um, I, the modules studied, um, like they were broad, they're diverse, they're all in key HR topics. A few that kind of stood out to me of that have helped me within my role within Deloitte are definitely the strategic HRM module. We were introduced into the new mode of working, which was the hybrid model, which like wasn't around before COVID or wasn't really around. And when I began in Deloitte, we were just introducing a hybrid model of um, training delivery and also of working. So it was really nice for me, I suppose, to bring my learning from college to my directors and managers because it was new for all of us. And I suppose I had a very good foundation and background of the hybrid model from um, Masters in HR. So it's really good to give them that insight from very early on in my career, I suppose. Um, other modules, I suppose, that really helped me were talent management. It was all about developing your employees, evaluating your training programs, return on investment, things I suppose I think about every day in my role. Um, I suppose other things as well that I think back is in Alton's module of psychology at work, we did the big five assessment and in our skills for leadership module, we did things like um, real teams, pseudo teams. It really was good to have, I suppose, an understanding of my personality and how I worked in teams and with the big five of how I landed on that when entering into Deloitte because my team is quite small and it was good just to know what way I worked and kind of see what other what way other people worked and how we could work together. So that was really good. Um, I suppose with the ARP, I got the opportunity to partner with the UN's SDG Academy, which was really, really interesting. Um, so I researched communication and trust within global virtual teams, which I suppose is very, very, um, I suppose in my role is very, um, what would you say, it's relevant to my role because um, Deloitte's actually in 150 countries and from time to time we'd be collaborating across different teams. So it was great to get an insight into how communication and trust would vary across the different cultures and how to navigate that. Um, so that was really, really exciting. Um, I suppose advice from going through the process and 
um, for people that might be thinking of it. I suppose with the ARP, as Alton mentioned, like the the college do get really, really good projects, and I got very lucky with mine, and um, so I was delighted with that. But if you really, I suppose, are really interested in an area, then source a project that you would like to do, because obviously there is enough projects for everyone, but everyone might be interested in the one area, so you might just end up missing out. So from the start of the year, I would say getting in contact with companies, even your own company, and sourcing a project and bringing it to Alton or Anthony. Um, navigating assignments, um, like the assignments, obviously the course is full on, but it's not it's not too full on. Like there is time to do things. I did work, I did work part time while being um while being in the course, not in HR, but I'm um, just in a part time job, so that is definitely doable. Um, but obviously it depends on personal circumstances. So I would say just engaging with your materials, engaging with your lecturers and definitely engaging with your peers, because um, if you engage with all of them, you'll get a very, very good understanding of the course. And definitely turning up to class, um, like you from turning up to class and just reading the materials, you get a very different outlook on what actually happened. So I suppose I came out the masters and I came with real life stories of the classes because I went to it. Other people may not have. They might have just done the assignments, you know, got an understanding of the assignments, but there was no real life practice, I feel. Um, as well, actually, I just remembered the guest lecturers. They were brilliant. Um, I suppose they kind of cause a bit of motivation and drive in us to succeed because they're all so senior in their role and they're all very inspiring that they were once in our shoes. Um, so that very much motivated us as well. Um, and I suppose in terms of doing it full time or part time for me, full time, that's what I just wanted to do because it was just the best option for me. I know guys that did it part time and worked as well. It really depends on personal circumstances. I don't think there's one better than the other. Um, but yeah, so the lecturers are very supportive. Your class, I'm sure, will be very supportive. And any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or if you have any questions now. I think that might be everything, Alton. Yes, thanks so much, Chloe. Um, I think some helpful advice there for um, prospective students. Again, I really appreciate the time. We actually would have heard from a current student, but they're actually in class at the moment. They have their very last lecture today on th so Thursday of the last week, so I didn't want to take a student out of class. Uh, so, Chloe, I really, really appreciate the time. I know this is your lunch break and you're no going problem. back to work shortly. Um, so I think Chloe is a great example of one of the successes of the program in terms of the effort she put into the program, but also what she got out of it in terms of knowledge gained and skills acquired, but also um, a fantastic new uh, career opportunity for her in Deloitte. So I really, really appreciate it, Chloe. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm just very conscious of the time, guys. The if for those of you that want to find out uh, a little bit more about the um, the program, we have the the program page. Um, and you can see the link there under entry requirements. Just one thing to highlight there as well is that Chloe highlighted that she came onto the program uh, from a bachelor's in social science. And that's very important just to emphasize that we will accept a 2-1 on a level A program in any discipline. So we have students in the class who have had a degree in art history. We've had psychologists on the program. We've had engineers. We've had sociologists. Um, we've had uh, architectural um, architecture graduates as well, but we also have commerce graduates as well. So the class is made up of a, a diverse range of students, both nationally and internationally, which I think reflects, I suppose, the the, the diverse nature of human resource management as well. Um, so those of you that are looking for more information, there's a link uh, on the program page, uh, again, on the CUBS website. Uh, and as I said, if you need to contact me or contact the program uh, administrator, uh, who is Laura Mannion, you'll see our slides there and our, sorry, the, our contact details there. Um, so that is it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And I'm just checking there to see if there are any questions come in for either myself or James on either the HDIP in HR or the MSc in HRM. Look. Um, so no questions so far. Um, it's probably a good sign, I think, James, we've answered everything. Um, but for those of you that do, uh, to do have any questions, you can get in touch with myself or James, you have our email address, or you can contact Pro uh, Laura, who's the programme administrator. Um, I'm just checking, James, I haven't missed any questions there. I don't think anyone has come in, no? Yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, I've been keeping an eye on it there as well. Um, but right. again, hopefully you signed it. Uh, 
people have their questions answered hopefully in the presentations but again Albert we're here any time to reach yeah. out to us offline also I would be happy to to take your questions and um yeah thanks so much again everyone for for yeah. coming along and to, to, to Tom and Ian also for the help with, with setting up and in the background um yeah. and hopefully yeah, we'll see some so of you in September thanks very much guys thank you thank you everyone